Well, good afternoon. Today we're looking at Psalm chapter 81 and beginning in verse number one through three for just a moment. Uh, Sing aloud unto God your strength. Make a joyful noise unto God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp of the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on your solemn feast days. Now, there's two things I want to call your attention to. Number one is that the worship was a joyful occasion, and uh, you can see that there's an outburst, or you might even say an emotional display. Uh, the second thing, as you notice, he talks about the appointed time, and I think that's very important. Uh, you must remember that uh, the, in Israel, in ancient times, what we call the Old Testament period, there were certain holy days that were uh, on a set or appointed time. They weren't uh, days that were left to, to themselves, that is spontaneous, but they were certain days a certain periods in which they were to gather and to worship God. I think there's a reason for that. Uh, if you uh, only attend to the things of God uh, when you feel like it, uh, oftentimes you just won't feel like it. There's a certain uh, discipline that's required. Uh, for example, in New Testament, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, uh, the writer says that they that uh, on the first day of the week, and if you're not familiar with that term, the first day of the week would be on Sunday. And on the first day of the week, the Bible says the disciples came together, and it tells us exactly why. Of course, they came together to worship, but the phrase is used to break bread, which has reference, of course, to uh, the Lord's Supper. And so we know that even in New Testament times, God had appointed a certain time uh, in which we were to gather together. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse uh, 1, where it says on the first day of the week, Paul talks about when the church at Corinth had came together and uh, were involved and partake of certain activities in the worship service to God. And so there are set times. I think it's important uh, just to emphasize this for a moment, is that it wasn't spontaneous, and uh, this these uh, worship wasn't left to themselves. And I think that we have come to a time in America, even before the COVID episode today, is that uh, people... Uh, uh, we're very uh, spontaneous in their worship, and uh, what I've experienced in life, those people like that seldom make it to church or to worship service, and or else they're very sporadic in it. And there's a reason for that because, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are uh, to please the Lord, and so we're, we're to be where he tells us to be on those certain appointed times. Now, I'm going to leave that thought with you, but I think we ought to ponder and reflect upon it, because I think that there are times when we feel too tired and too busy, and we don't feel like it, and yet I've experienced, and I'm sure you have, that even there's times when I just don't feel like it, and I feel worn out, that uh, I drive drag myself there, if you will, and I'm always happy that I made it. There's You come back to life when you're in the worship service, and you're glad that you made it. So don't leave it to yourself, and uh, don't think, well, I just don't feel like it today, or I don't feel like it tomorrow, because what you'll find, if that's the basis of your uh, attendance and your worship, you'll find that you don't feel like it a whole much. So it's important to remember this, and I understand and can I say it just one more time? I understand that this COVID uh, business has put a cloud uh, over uh, church attendance. And I want to just say this again without being too redundant. There was a cloud before the COVID cloud uh, because people uh, today uh, have just quit coming to church. How different it was from generations ago. But I'm going to leave that thought because there's something else I want to mention in this uh, psalm. If you get down to verse number eight, uh, the writer says, and God is speaking, of course, here, hear, O my people. Now, they didn't hear, and they didn't hear very well, and though it was very clear what God had said, they just didn't want to do it. 
And actually, they even got to a point where they even despised doing what God had said. And so he says, Here, O people, I will testify unto Israel, if thou will hearken unto me. Now, I'm going to look look at that phrase for just a moment, because if you read the rest of the chapter, if they would have hearkened unto me, and uh, the Lord will talk about if you had walked in my ways. In other words, God had told them how to live and how to obey him and uh, stated very, very plainly, very, very clearly, but they refused to do so. And so he says, if you would have done it, all those things that you went through, all those uh, calamities that uh, you got yourself in a mess to wouldn't have happened. And that's why he says, you know, if you'd have walked in my ways, I would have taken care of your adversaries down there in verse 14. I'd have done, uh, I would have blessed you. And yet you see, you just didn't want to do it. And so it's important that we have uh, uh, a willingness and a desire to hear God. Now, let me go back to a couple of thoughts here real quickly, because I think two thoughts uh, are very important. When we talk about discipline in the Christian life, I think that we ought to set times. You can go into Acts 2. They had a set time for the hour of prayer. And again, if you don't have a set time, you know, when you're going to do that and you do it just when you feel like it, you're going to find uh, that's going to be a very challenging thing. And uh, so I'm, I want to emphasize the idea of uh, discipline. There's a fellow by the name of J.J. Packer, a well-known writer, and he has a chapter in his book uh, entitled The uh, Discipline of Joy. Think about that for a moment. Not only have, be disciplined, have a set time in your life for prayer, but also how about this, having a set time where you just thank the Lord and you rejoice because how he's blessed you and all the promises that he has given you. Take take a few minutes every day and just, just, just get there by yourself and have that discipline of joy where you just are rejoicing because what God has done for you. The second thing is, we need to look at our own hearts sometimes and see whether or not we're really willing to listen. And, uh, and, and, and I don't even have to go down this road because so many times, you see, we got ourselves in trouble because we refuse to listen. We're kind of like a child sometimes when the parent says, you know, pick up your toys. It's time to go to bed. He doesn't want to, and he's not intending to do so. And you have to fight him to get him to bed. So those are two important thoughts in this very short, uh, very short uh, uh, psalm today, but boy, they're powerful thoughts, and we ought to think about those two things, about the set time that God has given us to worship him, and then secondly, about willing and desiring with a joyful heart to obey him. And so we're going to continue our study in Psalm chapter 82 tomorrow. Hope you're with us.